as busy moms, it goes without saying that we are entitled to our necessary breaks to keep keeping on with our many expectations of mothering. And me, your host, Flantha, is the mama down to join you for the necessary distraction we all need when life gets too hard, too real, and too much. Join me for an hour of necessary distraction of laughs, cries, and everything in between from adulting, culture, relationships, confessions, and beyond. Hi there, this is your host, Philantha. I'm here with Jade today. She's not just a mom, but she owns her own small business here in Minnesota. She, if you have seen her TikTok, she is banging. She got a banging body, (laughs) and she got a banging booty, and she knows exactly how to move it. I wish I could do that, and I may have tried to, and it just does not look like that. So um, I'm going to have her introduce herself, and I will let you guys know how we know each other. I think she's so fun, and if you aren't already, I will obviously leave her information, but please follow her. She is just a ton of fun, and Uh, she will have you laughing just like how she's had me laughing. Oh, thank you. Hi, I'm Jade. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. I've never been on a podcast before, so I'm kind of nervous, but this is fun. (laughs) So I am a stay-at-home mom of three. I have a seven-year-old son, Amari, four-year-old daughter, Bella, one-and-a-half-year-old daughter, Aria. My husband is Dominican, so we have biracial children. We've been together for 14 years almost, so. Wow. Crazy. I know. We got married a year and a half ago, but we've been dating for like 13, 12 years before getting married, so. Oh my god! I know. You it's guys crazy. Have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, like we started dating when I was 17, now I'm 30, so. So what's the trick? I, I, I don't know. Good <laughs> sex? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, you got three kids. So. I mean, he did say he's Dominican, so. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, I guess we know how they have three children. Uh, so, anyway, you got a little oh taste of Jade. This is yes. literally how she is all the time. Ugh. How we met is through a mutual friend, mm-hmm. a mutual friend through fam- my side of the family. And since then, we've just kind of been popping off. We, believe it or not, this is our first time meeting for the second time in real life. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we <laughs> keep up with each other virtually. Yes. And that's really sad because we live in the same state. I know. But then again, she's got like three kids and I've got one. And so she's a busy mama. But you also have three because you have two dogs. I do. I do. <laughs> that counts. Yes. If you haven't seen my stories, we got a new little puppy. Right now he's 10 weeks. When you guys hear this, he'll probably be closer to like 24 weeks. He is a German Shepherd, Great Dane, St. Bernard mix. He is the cutest. And again, if you haven't, go look at my stories. He's he, so fluffy. Yes. <laughs> I know. Unfortunately, she walked through the doors and I was like, sorry, the puppies are sleeping. I know. I need to see them. <laughs> I will I will bring them down for sure after okay. the session. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how do you keep up with being a stay-at-home mom of three kids? Oh, it's crazy. It's literally crazy. Every day I like lose my mind, but then I get up and do it again the next yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> I just try to stay on top of things as much as I can, like with cleaning, with housework. I mean, it's just never ending. And then I have like school drop off and pick up. I'm in the car for like three to four hours a day with that. And it's nuts. I'm ready for summer. But Has it always been your idea to be a stay-at-home mom? I have always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. And it just kind of happened like with the pandemic and then having our third daughter like right as the pandemic was starting I was like it just got hard with like childcare, and I'm like we're not gonna just like have me work so that we can pay for daycare like that makes no sense and I always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom so and it just kind of happened oh that's so awesome so would you say that you are like type a on a routine with them in order to just keep some sort of sanity yes Yes. or you like roll with the punches and there are tantrums and we're gonna keep going with the day well a little of both actually because like I I've always been like good with routines and like keeping the same routines and they kind of like know their routine now so they're like good with that but then like obviously tantrums happen or like if I can't get to something one day then it's like I just like leave it and do it when I can What is the one thing that you wish working moms knew about being a stay-at-home mom? I guess that is just like never ending. Like I always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, but I never knew like how hard it was, I guess. Like you're a mom for 24-7, but then it's like when you're a stay-at-home mom, it's like double or triple 
the work like mm-hmm. it's just never ending okay i have to say this because even online you always look so perfect no and good t- <laughs> <laughs> two days a week two days a week i put myself together <laughs> I swear to God, some days, one day I went to school drop off and I was literally in my pajamas because I didn't have time to like change and I just like threw my hair up and I'm like, thank God I don't like have to get out right now. But yeah, it's no, you see the good things on social media. Okay. So (laughs) when I put together, that's one day a week. (laughs) And I totally get that because this past week with my, we pulled my daughter out of school just because of COVID exposure and everything. And we wanted to be proactive about that. Yep. And so I, and I'm glad we did because the following days after it, it was like, yep, someone in her classroom was positive and then the next person. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, no, I'm glad that we made that call. So I feel like I, and we got a puppy too. And so I feel like. We plan, but not plan that. Yeah. And so I feel like I have three kids. Yeah. And I was a solo parent again. Oh. And I was just a little like, how do people do this? Like, do I want a second child now? Like, how do I balance this? <laughs> You're like, thinking that. Like, there's, yeah, because we were planning to get pregnant by the end of the year and then have a baby next oh, year. Yes. And then I was like, that would be so sweet. But now that I have the puppy, I'm like, oh my God. You're like, let me take a step back. Yeah. It was just. Well, the one thing that we had agreed on on the ride up was, okay, I can take care of him during the day if you can do the nighttime. Yeah. And the thing is, that's different when you have a baby because yep. I was breastfeeding. I oh, breastfed for two and a half years. Yeah. So it was me all the time. All the time. And even when you, I was learning about breastfeeding, it was like he had offer, but it didn't matter because I would have to pump during that time. Yes. Anyway, so how helpful uh, How helpful was it yeah. if he was giving her a bottle and I was already up right. pumping? Exactly. Yep. Like, while you're like, that routine. makes no sense. That makes no sense. Yeah. And so she was always either in our bed, safely. <laughs> you know, just, just staying. Just in staying. <laughs> just she was safely. We did safe co- uh, co-sleeping. Yeah. And yeah, so that's how we had to do it. But this past week, it was just like, I'd hear him cry and scream. And I'm like, you got it, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got it, right? Because oh good, God, uh, I'm, not, I'm not getting up. Yeah. I'm not going outside. It's I have no pants on. <laughs> it was all this. 2 a.m. in the morning. Like, I'm good. I did this for two and a half years. Yeah. And so, yeah, it just, it's making us reconsider. Like, do we want to add one? Right now. Yeah. And I was like, maybe it's a good thing we got the puppy. Yeah. Because it's making you realize. Yeah. "Mm." Right. And so it's like, I feel like it would never be never ending anyway. You know what I mean? I know. So it's like, we don't mind that. But it's just a matter of if we can control it. Yeah. Let's give it a few more months. Yeah, and you know, see how be, things go. Yeah, and see mm-hmm. how things go because yep. yeah, it, I it, it took me right back to postpartum, and I don't know if it's a little the trauma of it, but I was like, <laughs> I don't know how I did this with all the hormones. Like the hormones was really doing its thing I because oh I I'm tired and I'm working full time, and yes, I'm glad it's a lot. Yeah, and like the silver lining is just I'm glad that Avery was able to be like, okay, mom, I'll help, or like oh, I'll be extra geez. patient with you. Oh. I know there's only one of you, or oh. you know, and no, and That's she's so like, mom, it's fine. Understands. Yeah, and she's like, I'll, I'll just go potty. I'll let you know when I'm done. Okay, take the like, potty outside. You. I know. I'm like, I'm so glad you're so much older, and oh, I'm so yeah. glad that like she understands it to a point. Right. You know, exactly. The one oh. thing right now is that she is going backwards, and that she's really mommy, 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 oh, mommy. Because of the puppy. The puppy. Yeah. And also because she's had me for for this yes. whole week all to oh, herself. Oh, right. Because she's been home. Mm-hmm. Yes. And. Yeah. I think because my husband was deployed for a whole year, yeah. she was very me, 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 me oh, all the time. Course. Like, mommy, yeah. mommy, mommy, mommy. And then yeah. that took about, to be brutally honest, if you don't know about military families, it took about nine months after he came home that she was finally like, okay, I can oh. sleep in between mom and dad, not yeah. just on mom's side. Oh. And I know that broke his heart for yeah. so long. So this past week... The inner joke is, wow, you're he's really, really good at being the favorite parent. Yeah. And he's really, really horrible at tolerating not being the favorite oh, parent. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? Like you had this for like the last year. Right. Like, like why like have you were you not taking notes when I was doing it? Like, why is it so personal? And oh why are gosh, you so funny. like but her like yeah. it's not personal at right. all right because you'd be like well she she keeps asking about you so you just <sighs> you might as well go in there and i'm like so and his feelings yeah and i'm like and you're the parent give her options like 
Tell her no I and keep going. I think it's hard for guys. I don't think they understand sometimes the I way. Think, well, I believe it's also because they were mama's boys. Oh, that could be it. Mm, I don't that know about yours, it. but yeah. Parker was a huge mama's boy. And yeah. I mean, Luis is the baby of the family too. Mm, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they they don't know what it's like to not have the attention. Yeah, and they don't know how to tolerate not having oh, the that's attention. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> And so it's, it's, he knows it too. Cause he smirks every single time I mention it. And I'm right. just like, oh my God. Like right now he's so happy that she chose to go with him to the, oh, yeah, to ch- the, the children's, children's museum, museum right now. Oh. And I'm like, go right ahead. And he was like, cheesing. Have your little daddy dog, yeah. Right? And he's like, I'm fine with that. And like, she thinks it's her <sighs> idea. And I'm like, honey, it doesn't even matter. Cause I have a thing anyway. Yeah. So I wasn't like, even going to go. You guys can go. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, you're very much okay with that. And I'm like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do it more. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to do this like do this every weekend? Uh, like, I'm fine. And he's like, You're really fine. You don't need anything. I'm like, I'm fine. Oh like, my gosh, that's funny. He's like, You're you're cool that like she's like not crying for you. And I'm like, Yeah. I think yeah, any mom's think happy okay. that their child is not crying. Crying for them. <laughs> right. You know? So oh, oh yeah. Gosh. See that's I think as like a peer mom to mom, yes. you get it. You oh, know? I totally get it. Oh totally gosh, <laughs> I know. I don't know why. Yeah, I, tell us if this is how it is for with your partners, but they just can't tolerate not being the favorite, or like don't know the means and don't want to know the means of how to tolerate that. Right. <laughs> But then he, like, soaks it up because Aria, she's the youngest and she's, like, such a daddy's girl. And the other two were such, like, mommy, boy, and girl. So he's, like, you're the only one that loves me. I'm, like, oh, oh my God. God. That's dramatic. Yes. He's, like, oh, you're the only one to cuddle me. I'm, like, oh, my God. He's so dramatic. I guess from the youngest child to another I youngest know, child. They, I guess that's their bond. Yep, that's their bond. They both get it that we all just don't understand in this world. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, so I do want to do one of the bits, and I think it would be so much fun. Yeah. Um, but before we get into that, you haven't shared with us what you also do. Okay, so I have an online boutique, mm-hmm. women's clothing. It's super small. You know, I just launched, I think it was in November, but I have a lot more pieces that I'll be launching, especially like spring and summer. So um, it's simplyj.com, simplyjayde.com. And I still I have some cute things on there right now, but like I said, I'll be launching more, so... Stay tuned. She's got so many cute pieces right now that are really good transitional pieces from like winter and spring. I would definitely check it out. I loved everything that I've bought so far from her. And again, it's local. So you're helping her, her family like directly. It's, there's no third party or anything like that when mm-hmm. it comes to this girl making her own money and being able to spend it too. <laughs> so let's celebrate that more. And okay, let's head into the bit. Okay. Okay. So this one's called a hell no. It's a relationship thing that is just a hard boundary for you, whether that's partaking or not partaking in intimacy things, playfulness, body part, partner habits, or like with you that are just hard boundaries. I hate being tickled. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, you're going to have to explain that one. You know, that's the first thing I can't think of. I literally get like violent because (laughs) I hate being tickled. (laughs) I get violent. And he knows this and he'll like, even like my kids, I'm like, okay, stop. Like, I don't know why. Like, I just cannot handle it. Do you have like tickle spots that are just like, no? Yeah, I'm very ticklish <laughs> and I just hate being tickled. <laughs> like, it makes me mad. I I don't know what happens to me. <laughs> it's just a bad just reaction. Yeah, we bad reaction. Tickle. I start kicking. I'm like, stop. What is your love language then? I think it's acts of service <laughs> that makes sense yeah. you're a stay home mom yeah. you're like what can you do for me out I do everything it. for the family what yes. do you do no and yeah he he knows that so now he he knows we have like a routine because his is touch right yeah. is that one mm-hmm. yeah that's his and he's like god you never cuddle me that's why he <laughs> talks about aria i'm like jesus yeah okay here's a hug here's like, a hug oh here's a love god. tap here's here's a kiss and we're gonna go do dinner i know but 
yeah, he no, he knows like with my acts of service, I'm like so he knows like okay if he sees dishes like he'll do the dishes not all the time but <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> He's learning. He's learning He's in the routine. <laughs> That's so hilarious. So I don't like being okay. So I have like tickle spots. Yeah, and like when people use normal tickle spots, right? On everybody is not my tickle spots. Oh, yours are different. Mine are different. Like what? Like my neck. It's like right on my collarbone, oh. but not on my neck. It's really weird. Or, like, when you tickle me, it's got to be, like, under my armpit yeah. or, like, just below that, yeah. not on my armpit oh. or, like, not on my ribs. Yeah, so slightly like, lower it's than slightly any. lower, like, slightly higher. And, like, my inner thighs is, like, super ticklish. Oh and, like, gosh, that's not that's where so other funny. people are ticklish. <laughs> Yeah, or like the outside of my ankles. It's so weird. Yeah, see? (laughs) See, like I have like tickle spots and like the weirdest thing is only Parker knows them. And like it's not sexual at all. Right. It's the outside of my ankles. Like and like inside of my like thighs. Like it's so so weird. It's so sexy. (laughs) And like it's so risque, right? But like I don't. This is why I'm like, yeah, I'm ticklish, but like... In weird spots. In weird spots. <laughs> like, it's not even like, only my husband can tickle me. It's right. Weirdly, only he would know the spot. Right. And it's not like, again, it's not like a weird intimacy thing at all. It's just... No. Yeah, he, it's just weird parts of my body, that you know? So, so it's so weird when people say things like yeah. that. And they're like, don't you just, isn't it fun when you guys like, yeah, you like, know, no. play fight and he tickles you? And oh, I'm like, um, no. oh, <laughs> um, sure. Not here's like my ankle. Seat. Yeah, I was like, here's my ankle, my inner thigh, like right underneath. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? That's so awkward. And it's weird because when we were younger, because we've been together forever too, like he would try to tickle me and I'm like, that's not, I'm not ticklish. You're like, and he's like, that's not funny. Right, it's not funny, like, it doesn't work yeah, out. Like it's ankle? Just, yeah, I was like, grab my ankle or something. And he's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. And then after that, he's like, oh, I know now. he now. knows. And I'm like, oh my God. And so it's not really a playful thing anymore. How long it's have more you guys so been together? We've known each other, I guess, now. Half our lives. We've oh known each other gosh. since we were 15. Oh. So, yeah. I didn't know that. Well, I guess you can say like 13. We went to junior high together. We didn't actually get together until high school. Okay. And like, we've been together ever wow. since yeah cute and if you were to ask me like what makes it work yeah what makes um, it work <laughs> i would say it's that we have always let each other be our own people that's important and yes and we've because i noticed like with my other friends who've been in long-term relationships it's like they have to be with each other or like they become one person and oh. i'm always like oh no um and me and him we've never been like that yeah. it's like he is his own individual person and right. I am my own individual person. And then we choose to come together. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was never any like jealousy of like if he hung out with his friends and I hung out with my friends yeah. or like just like college phase where like I party with my friends and then he'd be he at home. He does his own thing. Yeah, he did his own mm-hmm. thing. He'd pick me up if I was drunk or whatever. But like yeah. it wasn't ever like, where are you at? Why aren't you home? What's going on? Yeah. Like it's Need never. To know all yeah. The time. Oh. And we never went through that. Like, that's base. good especially because you've been together for so long like you're yeah. still trying to figure out who you are and oh you yeah know, yeah like uh, through those years yes especially for me in the last couple of years since having like postpartum depression and everything yeah. and always and having been in therapy since it's I've grown so much mm-hmm. and like to have grown in our marriage and grown as parents and I think I think if people were to give me, like, ask me for advice four years ago, it'd be, like, the worst advice ever. Yeah. I didn't know anything. Right, right. But if you had to ask me now, I'd be like, sure, what situation? Yeah. At what time? What were you saying? What was, what were they saying? Because how, that contributes to your values. and How this, whatever the disruption was in the argument, that's how it came to be. Yep. And I feel like in my own growth, it's only made us better Mm -hmm. because he values the same thing that as I do, obviously, yeah. but like being good parents and yep. what that means for us yep. and what it means for raising Avery. Mm-hmm. And also for like values of financial reasons and also for personal goals and business ventures. Yeah. So yeah. That's awesome. That's, thanks for asking. You're so welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so that's my little advice. Yeah. So I want to go into like the second bit here. Right? Okay. Since you're doing so good. <laughs> Okay, so what is, this is called happy hour. What is one thing you got to get off your chest, a personal or work pet peeve or mama pet peeve, or like a daily task annoyance or like something you hate to love, like the Kardashians or like Selling oh, Sunset? Selling Sunset. <laughs> or like The Bachelor. Oh my God, so I listened to your first episode and you were talking about Selling Sunset yeah. and I was like, yes, I have to talk to her about yeah. this because I watched the 
four seasons in like three weeks. Oh my god. Which is like I'm so busy, I yeah. barely can fit in. I was like watching it when I was doing the dishes. But like yeah, I was gonna say, but like us moms we have our tricks. Like right. you'll be surprised at what we can accomplish. I know. Yeah. yeah, so no, I love that show and you know they're coming out season five and I didn't know that. Yeah, in August. I'm like, oh I can't wait. But now I have to wait till August. So Right. I would say that's reality TV. I love the Kardashians. I haven't watched though in a few years. I couldn't keep up with the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're like, yeah, I couldn't really do the whole thing. Oh so, and Housewives of New Jersey. Oh yeah, I, I can't get show. into the Housewives. I cr- I can't watch any of them except for that one. Oh. I don't know why. It just intrigued me. Is it like their accent? Or maybe. Like, or maybe. Do how you they like act? walk around like making their maybe accents? I want to be from New Jersey. <laughs> So it's really funny you say that because I think I saw like an episode or two and I was like, wow, people actually live like this. Oh, I know. And then I went to Jersey and I'm like, wow, people really. It's do different. Like this. Or is it the same? It's the same. Oh, okay. Like, it didn't, like, you didn't have to be rich to have the same problems that they had. Oh, my God. And gosh. it was so hilarious because yeah. it's like. We went into, like, parts of the town where, like, different eateries and things. Like, everyone acted so bougie. Oh like, no gosh. matter, like, what their socioeconomic status was, like, yeah, they all, all the, same. the same. And, like, when we went to, with, like, Jersey Shore, when they went to, like, the club on, like, the main pier yeah. or something Oh, my God, like I missed Jersey Shore. We walked, yeah, we walked it, and I was like, this is it? They made a whole reality show on From this? this? <laughs> yeah. Where's the beach? Right. Okay. And I'm like, the beach is still like 50 feet away. You can't even get there. Where do you have to get your ticket? Oh and like, my gosh. before even getting there, I was like, wow, this parking is ridiculously dumb. Oh my Like, gosh. it's worse than like St. Paul Grand Avenue. Yeah. It's worse than that. And yeah, it's just, we walked like half a mile just to get to the pier. Oh wow. And then walked to the pier in like 30 minutes. And I'm like, and then they done. made a reality TV show. <laughs> this is the nightclub. This is what their nightclub looked like. And they made full on seasons off of yeah. that. Like Snooki walked this path. Yeah. It's crazy because everybody talks about the Jersey Shore. They've got like pictures. They've oh, got, you wow, know, all that. Like that. So it's really funny because that was, that's my only instance with watching the show. Yeah. But I was like, wow. You yeah. know what I mean? Like we're, we're just from the Midwest. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know nothing. We're just small towns. Like what do we, what are you talking about? about oh so going out there i was like wow people really no matter what they really act all bougie like good for them, good for them. yeah like they carry the head high and everything <laughs> that's good their hair are even poofier yeah but like okay bigger yeah bigger like the bigger the better yeah, kind of thing yeah, like yeah. the very fake tan oh my god are they all like that yeah and like the oh. j- accents it's like depending on like what part of the town you're in like yeah. you can tell like you if you're tell. native you can tell which part of the town they're in between oh like their accents Gosh. It all sounded the same to me. Right. But I was like, okay. <laughs> it's like you another know? world. Yeah. And then like we went to New York because <clears throat> I didn't realize how close New York, New Jersey was. Yeah. And I was like, wow, you really, you really hear that accent to carry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. From Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? And I was like, wow. Oh my god. No wonder. I was like, is this how people feel about us? I probably. And our accents? Probably. Like, is it that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we don't notice it. Yeah. I think sometimes I can hear people's, like, Minnesotan accent. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Otherwise, Selling Sunset, I love, I think I said in the first episode, but I love... Just gla- how glamorous their lives are I for know, just being so, realtors. I know. It's so like, you know, my husband, he's a real, yeah. realtor. So he's like, he looked at me watching that and he was like, what is this? <laughs> he's like, okay, I'm going to go. same thing you do. He's like, I'm going to go. <laughs> She's like, can you be like that? I know. <laughs> can you own something like that? Can, can you? Can we live in houses like that. I know. <laughs> can you sell something like that? Like yeah. the commissions? Oh my I know. God. Well, my thing is like, how do you even get into that but then i'm like no that's they crazy. all have fake boobs and oh, they're all tan and yeah. they all have extensions so yeah. i'm like so i guess we all have to look like that in like order that. to yeah show homes like that and because you own a home yeah i own a home yeah the realtor is just like the front of what actually goes into buying a oh, house I know. so i'm like i wonder what like the loan processors look like you know <laughs> do they like, all look like that yeah do they all look like that or like are they like in a corporate building like oh and just gosh. processing all day like I know. what does that look like or how fast they close within months i'm like yeah wow 
people are really doing cash. <laughs> like I know all cash offers all, all for cash that. Offers. Like how do you do million that? dollar houses? Right. Like, what? Or like open houses, they were doing like Botox yeah. and stuff like that. I was like, can I be invited? I know, and it's I like go get some free. Botox. And I'm like, <laughs> I want to go look at a yeah, house and get some Botox. Me too. I'm like, can I get invited? Apparently, these are public things. I know. I want to publicly go get Botox if right. it's free. Like what? <laughs> Like Why, what just, you? Yeah, and like my husband when he watches me do it, he goes, "Do you understand that you're not watching the show?" I know you're literally looking at everything but the show. Like yeah. you are like making everything very logical. Here. Right, right. And I'm right. like, I know, but like that's crazy. You're like, like this, but how? How is this real? Yeah, and I'm, well, bring well, it's not real. <laughs> right, well, exactly. <laughs> like it's not real. And I'm like, okay, well then they really did sign on to be reality TV shows. But, like, how do they get paid? Like, do people actually like the fact that they are on a TV show? Yeah. Cool. You know what I mean? I know. I don't I know. know how I would feel about that. Yeah. So Crazy. Did you watch all of it? I did watch all of it. Yeah. So good. Yeah, so good. <laughs> so good. I was going to say, who's the girl who got, who was, like, pregnant? Christine. Christine. She's so extra. She is so oh my extra. God. I was she reading. She annoys me. And I, yeah, she does. <laughs> she annoys me, too. Well, I'm just a little, like hearing her articles afterward and she's like well it was like a lion's den and i'm like but it was your den you were the lion like it didn't need to be like that can we talk about how after she had her baby it was like a week after and she was like i'm good to go yeah she was still in her heels and yeah like, i wish her lots of therapy yeah and lots of self-esteem working through all of that because one of the articles I read was she said before she even feels films for the day the reason why she's late is because it takes her four hours to get ready every day yeah which, I wonder what she looks like without makeup right or like anything because you've never seen that no which I, I don't know I think in this day and age people like it when you look more like you and right. I feel like it's fading out to have all of that makeup Extra on stuff. yeah yeah and like there's nothing wrong with it but it's also like you're human and people like to see the human part of you yeah Christine, she just annoys me. Because I'm yeah. like, when I was nine months pregnant, I was not wearing heels oh like that. Oh my god. And her parties, like, yes. so extra. Well, I'm like, well, it's funny to see, like, who are the celebrities that are going to right. these, you know? Because it's yeah. like, so you guys, she is somebody there. Like, right. that's interesting. Yeah. So, Crazy. I don't know. I loved Chris Shell. Chris Shell is the sweetest. She's so sweet. She can lay off the Botox a little bit. Yeah, she's getting a little. Her face is getting a little, a little waxed a little up. Extra. Yeah. Yeah. I follow her on Instagram, and she looks even more different now. I'm like, uh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you can see them change the progression. This yeah. Seasons. And it's I'm all for like whatever makes you feel more beautiful. Right. But also at the same time, like Not we so want much. we want you to love. Like we want to see that you love yourself yeah, too and that's true yeah mm-hmm. so that's my two cents on it yeah it's not gonna sound like a break but we are sipping on our waters <laughs> i'm talking a lot so i'm having to sip on my water a yeah. lot so there's that it's there i promise you we're not awkward at all Just, you and, i have a great editor he's really great at this you won't even notice the blip at all <laughs> so let's see in your business how do you overcome imposter syndrome when you're thinking about your boutique or now that you have it or how do you structure that so that you keep going i'm struggling with that a little bit because of balancing everything but i don't know i think i just have to come up with a routine and like have set days for like things to launch or set days to take the pictures in it. I have to kind of come up with a schedule that works for me, but right now we're kind of just doing it as we can. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I noticed that you got a little tattoo there. You want to talk about it a little bit? Oh, yeah. So my sisters, actually my mom, my sisters, and my grandma, and my uncle all got the same tattoo. So my sister, she... It's like a sign for like to keep going, like, you know, the semicolon and to like never give up. And she struggles with like mental illness and she's actually recovering right now from substance abuse. And so we just kind of all got that when she got sober to like support her. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. And I should say it's on her right I was going to say right wrist. inklet. Uh, right. It's her, I was like, that's not right. That's not the right body part. Um, it's on her right wrist, yeah. and it's a heart with a semicolon. Yeah. So it's super sweet. Thank you. That is so adorable. Okay. The next one here is, what is one advice that you would give your younger self? 
that you would have needed or now that you look back, something that you would have liked that someone said to you? I think it would have to do with like budgeting and finances because Luis and I actually both never had good examples of this yeah. <laughs> growing up. Like we never knew how to, we still are struggling with budgeting. So that's something like we wish we would have known back then and then we could have like worked we would have known what to do, I guess, with better finances and budgeting and mm-hmm. all that. That wealth of knowledge is for sure, I think, a lot of us millennials are struggling yeah. with. Because a lot, we came up with parents that worked, 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 but never really communicated the finances part, yeah. I think. I yep. think as a generation, that's pretty much the same. Or like how to navigate and, I don't know, be a part of the evolution of money yeah. when, when you grow up and yeah. as you age mm-hmm. and with children and mm-hmm. how you balance all of that. Yep. I think those are like small little skills that are like magic tricks. Like that they all should teach that need. in school. Mm-hmm. They should have like budgeting class, finances. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't have any of that. No. If, if we did, I didn't know about it. So. I know that we had like, I guess it was part of history, but it was like finance aka learn about how the government works yeah but not necessarily like imagine if these were your finances this is what it would look like yeah yeah i think a part of it is like it's embarrassing for the (laughs) teachers like now that i look back i was like i think we had a conversation about it but it was hard because they were like well everything just changes and it's like well yeah even them as teachers how could they assume better when they were just teachers what other finances were they supposed to know from their own adult lives Mm -hmm. that was beneficial to even tell high schoolers as they were probably straight out of college too yeah. and trying to figure it, figure out. it all out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Oh, I had a thought. <laughs> and I completely lost it. Lost. it. <laughs> you lost it. Yeah. I was going to say, did you want to talk about your birth stories? Sure. Okay. So my son, Amari, he came three days early. I didn't have to be induced or anything with him. My water broke and that was the weirdest thing. Did your water break with your daughter? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, sorry. I'm having a look on my face. Because <laughs> you're going to talk about yours, right? In the next episode. <laughs> uh, the one that's being released this coming Monday, the third episode, I talk about part of my postpartum. Oh, okay. I feel like I can't just be like, here's my birth story. Because yeah. it's very multifaceted. Okay. But <laughs> I laugh or I make a face on that. Because how her water broke was because we were doing the thing. <laughs> and that's how it that's broke. Like yeah. Uh-huh. And my, my water broke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm-hmm. well, well, like, they say that does help you go into labor. It, so. it did. It did. It's the whole... I'm pretty sure it was the whole, like, my husband is half black, so he he pulls through. Let me tell you, I'm pretty sure it was that and, like, how strong his, oh his my God, surplus so amount funny. is. Because there's a lot of research on that. And, like, that yeah. is what happened because when right, right, right at the end, yeah. we were both, like, Ooh, You're like, that wasn't me. <laughs> that wasn't you. Like, I didn't, it That's didn't happen to me. Like, you know what I mean? We were both like, there was literally that five minutes of like, do I pull out or do I? Yeah, like, like, what, what do, do I do? do? We were both like, um, we're not quite sure what that was, but it could be what we think it is. But uh, it's not for another week. Like, we had that oh moment. Oh my God, that is And so like, the rest funny. of the day, we were like, oh man, like, how do we know? Like, yeah. I don't know. There was a gush and then like, there wasn't a gush. And then it was like, leaky, leaky. But like, <laughs> oh, other, it was like, the, the mucus plug. So like, was the mucus plug like originally there? Or like, it was really, it was a really funny, like, oh my God, that's like hours. the best. It, water exists. breakage exactly <laughs> and then like it's funny because later that day we went to go get it confirmed yeah by my midwife because we went in and she was like oh yeah you know they did a stress test and she's like oh yeah no we you know she took a little bit of like the fluid that was coming out and then she tested that and she's like oh yeah this is your water and it broke today do you remember what you guys are doing and we both sure do and like oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, it's whatever that got us into this mess in the first place. Oh and God, she started cracking it. up because oh she was just like, gosh. there's no shame in telling me that. No. She's like, it happens more often than that. She's like, I should have been, with my years of experience, I should have phrased it differently. And <laughs> she's, because she saw us like, I went bright red because I didn't know what to say. Yeah, because you're like, oh. 
Because <laughs> when it broke at 11, it was like we checked in at 5 o'clock. So it was like the whole oh, wow. day. So it's like I, we didn't know. Yeah. And that's so hard with your first. Well, even with any, you just don't know. You, and you're just like, oh. Uh, yeah. Should I go in? Right. I, well, I mean, we had called her and she's just like, just monitor, just let us See know. How like, goes. because they're like, you were already so, f- you, she was already, Avery was already so low. Yeah. And they were like, it could just be, yeah, I was probably, you know, they told me what it all was, but yeah. they were like, it could have, it couldn't happen, but just, you know, no more penetration. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, no shit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> And they were like, just keep it easy. Like, let us know if you're starting to cramp or anything. You know, obviously they went through the whole spiel, mm-hmm. but it took us all day because there was no progression. Like, Nothing it was, was the big on. hurrah. And then after that, we were the like, big I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then we didn't even know what to do. Like, we just, I don't know, it was the first time. So yeah, it was like, you're just like, do I go uh, out? Do I not go right. out? Like, I'm not cramping. I'm not cramping. I'm, you're like, little... am I having contractions? What? Yeah, and I was like, is this what it's supposed to feel like? You don't know. It's so weird because... And, like, you no one see, can prepare you for that. No. And you mm-hmm. see movies, and they're like, oh, my God, my water broke. Oh, my God, I'm in so much pain. Like, rush to the hospital, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Like, it does not happen no. like that. No. no. I I didn't go into active labor until about 3 o'clock the next morning. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like, ever since my water broke, it was literally, like, nothing, nothing happened. Like, wow. sure, I had, like, baby cramps, right. but, like... What were they? They weren't, like, real. Yeah, they weren't real. Yeah. And, like, they weren't period cramps either. Right, yeah. So, like, you can tell something's happening, but... Not not. really. (laughs) Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, you were so pregnant by then that everything hurts. Yes. But that was a normal kind of hurting. Right. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. We waited. We even went out to hibachi that night, and... Got the last meal in. (laughs) (laughs) I did! And, you know, it was just so funny, because I was just, like smiling ear to ear because we were like we don't know yeah when we checked in that night they were like are you gonna like i had asked am i gonna have the baby tomorrow or yeah. in the next day they're like anywhere from two to five days and that's what? normal and yeah and i was like really and they're like yeah i mean by day two you know we'd have you come in just try stay just to make sure everything's okay so that's wow. actually normal oh my god yeah i didn't know that yeah so yes oh uh, my gosh again my birth story is yeah. very multifaceted it's not just a straight shot it starts like, with a <laughs> yeah i was like it's it's an interesting start i don't know how i'm gonna tell avery yet you know yeah uh, maybe when she is pregnant with the first one then i'll tell her yeah. like this is how my water broke yeah that is- so yeah, I, so like when other people tell their stories and they're like, "Yeah, my water broke. Yours did too." And I'm like, "Yeah, like, it, uh-huh. did, yeah it did, it did, it did. Yeah. <laughs> That's the face. Yeah, it did. Yeah." So anyway, okay. this is supposed to be about yes. your birth story. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I was in. I should back up. So before my water broke, I was having like pretty consistent contractions throughout the whole night. They would be like very consistent but then it would like space out oh and then it would be like consistent again i think they say for like an hour it should be consistent before you like go in or something i don't remember but so it was doing that and then i was in so much pain by the morning i was up all night and so we finally went in but i wasn't progressing so then they sent us home and then i we took a nap we were sleeping and then all of a sudden i just felt and heard like the big gush of water and i was like holy what happened (laughs) And Luis was like, he woke up because he jumped up and he's like, I just heard that. It sounded like a balloon. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. I was like, okay, so guess we're going back. Yeah. So then we went back at like one, no, I think it was probably like three in the afternoon we went back, but I wasn't really having bad contractions or anything. And then he, I was dilated to a 10 at like one. And then I pushed for two and a half hours. And then he finally... They had to use, like, the little vacuum thing because mm-hmm. he he wouldn't come out. And I was too exhausted to push mm-hmm. him out anymore. So they used that. And then he was born at 3.30 in the morning. Wow. Crazy. And then Bella, she was so easy. Mm-hmm. I My water broke again. We ha- It was football Sunday. And I was, like, baking all morning and cooking. And, like, just... <laughs> you were nice. I was in a great mood. Yeah. <laughs> I made spicy chili. And I heard that that puts you, like, into labor. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. And then so we had people over for football. And then all of a sudden I, like, was... I just, like, sat down on the couch. And I was like, oh, something, something happened there. <laughs> And then I like went upstairs and my sisters were like, what, what, did your water break? And I was like, I don't know. Cause it was just like a little bit. It wasn't mm-hmm. like the first time. And so I was like, I don't know if I peed or like <laughs> what's happening. 
Because if you are not pregnant or haven't known, towards the end, you just kind of leak. <laughs> Sometimes you, you just you, leak a little just, bit. It's there. And you kind of get up and you're like, uh, maybe. You're Is like, that what me? was that? I know. So weird. So then I was, every time I took a step up the stairs more and more was coming out, I was like, okay, I guess my water's breaking. <laughs> <laughs> but that was so emotional because I was so sad to leave Amari and I was like, my only oh. baby. And then I'm going to have another baby. But then, so we got to the hospital. I don't remember the times, but I started having pretty consistent contractions. I got the epidural and then with this epidural, I didn't feel anything like my contractions and nothing. With Amari, it kind of wore off at times so I could feel things still, but Bella, I was great. I was just talking it up with the nurse and then she's like looking at the monitor and then she's like, I'm going to check you. And so she checked me and she's like, you're at 10 centimeters. Oh. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Can't that was me. <laughs> Came in and, and then, talking and yeah, had a baby. Yeah, and then I pushed her out in like two pushes. <gasps> she was just ready. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you. And then Aria, I was induced a week early because I was having really, I was having contractions and like she was so low. She was like hitting a nerve and like just so uncomfortable. I was dilated to like a two for like weeks and. Mm-hmm. They're like, do you want to be induced? And I was like, yeah. So I got induced with her and I didn't know what to expect, but like I had this weird feeling that morning because I was like, Bella's labor was like so easy. Like, what is this one going to be? Like, you just don't know. So then, and being induced, I've never been induced. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what is this going to look like? And so we went in at like seven that morning and then I never progressed more than a four for like, oh my goodness. until like, so I progressed to a, from a two to a four within like a couple hours, but then I was doing all these positions like to try to progress and sh- I wasn't dilating anymore. And so at like 1030 and then her heart started dipping after <gasps> each contraction. So they they came in and they're like, you know, we could try like more positions. We don't know if it's going to work. We don't want to have to do like an emergency C-section if she's like super distressed. And at this point it was like 1030 at night and I was like, no, just do a C-section. Like, so that was really hard because I'm like, I never, I didn't ever, you don't want a C-section. Mm-hmm. Like you don't think of these mm-hmm. things, but, and then we had to be in the hospital extra because of the C-section. And then Luis had to pretty much do everything in the hospital because I couldn't even like get out of the yeah. bed barely. So he was like amazing and he did all the feedings, all the changings, oh. everything like, and yeah, we had to be there for three nights, I think. And recovery after a C-section is so difficult, especially with two other kids. I'm like, oh my gosh, but we got through it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love your birth stories. Oh, I you. love the variety of all. I know it's crazy because every time it's it can be different. Yeah, like, you just never know what to expect. I think that's like the best advice, though. Like, yeah, I know from as I only have one. I think that's what I would like to hear. Yeah, other than to go in and assume it's the same. Like I I'm very type A, so it's like if it's not a certain way, I then know. I could. Yeah, be a little bit agitated. Yeah, it's but, hard. Yeah, you just don't. That's the one thing you just like don't know yeah. how it's gonna go but I think that attests to like who they are too as yeah. people and yeah. I think you have talked to me about this how like the personalities yep. are so different yes and it it how their birth stories are, are so different yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that would then you know what I mean like looking back it's like oh yeah no that would make sense yeah so, like three completely different people yep. with personalities that are completely separate from each other yeah and so how true. yeah so oh my gosh oh the miracle of motherhood i love hearing people's birth stories i it's do like, too i just love it i'm like okay so how did this happen yeah. <laughs> i do too and that's why i'm always like can i hear yours before you hear mine because right. mine can get pretty complicated <laughs> and i do have to say like i think I stopped telling my story because it made other moms feel bad about their own. Mm. And yeah, it just... That's hard. Yeah. So it's like, as proud as I was that Avery came out in 15 minutes and two pushes. Yeah. And I didn't realize how short and quick that was until like literally the next day. Yeah. And my my midwife had told me that and she's like, good job. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, good job. Oh yeah, no, that was a hard time. Yeah. Whatever. And my husband was like, no, honey, that was 15 minutes. Like, do you understand? That was quick. 
And I'm that like, was quick. Oh, okay. And I was like, it was, seemed a lot longer than that, you yeah. know? Like, and he's like, no, she came out pretty quickly, and you did really good with like the placenta. Like this, is what my midwife was saying, and she's like, you barely tore. Like I don't know if you remember that. And I'm like, no, I just kind of remember her like swimming towards my nipple. Like you know what I mean? Like it's 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 just in such a euphoria oh, moment, and yeah. it's like literally you hear what's going on, but you're not there yep. you're all in tune with this baby and I don't know if that was for you but yeah. that's how it was for me so like it was kind of hard for me to see but when I got my video back I yeah. was like oh that's what happened you know that's how it really yeah happened. and mind you this is like two months post when I got my oh video my back my pictures back and I'm like yeah. oh you're like oh, interesting okay. yeah. that's not how it went in my head no at it's all completely different. yeah I was like that is what they had asked huh? <laughs> And I was like, I'm sorry I argued with you on that. Oh like, you were right, you know? And it's, it's really funny to see. And it's like, wow, she really was covered in all of that, wasn't she? Like, I know. You, like, you don't you even miss realize. so much. Yeah. 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 Or like how her cord was still in me while I was like nursing her. Or, oh, like, that's so cute. Yeah. Because like, everything happened so fast. Yes, yeah, so fast. And when they pulled out, because all of that was on the videotape. When they pulled out the placenta and, like, we let it sit on me oh, while she yeah. was sitting on me until yeah. it stopped pulsating. Yeah. It was really cool to see that because I remembered it, but I didn't remember it. Yeah. You know? like yep. I, was I like, mean, you're just really focused on Yeah. The I was like, I didn't realize all the blood was gushing off yeah. the placenta. You know? Like, that's gross. Like, no wonder you were grossed out in the photos. Like, that would make like, sense. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. That, that is kind of gross. I have a whole stomach sack on me and then oh I have my baby gosh. on me and I was naked and baby yeah. was naked. Get. that was a lot of blood and a lot of other stuff yep. that would make sense you know <laughs> um so it's little things like that where i'm like gosh the miracle of having a baby like from my own perspective on it like seeing it happen yeah. and then seeing it happen outside of me mm-hmm. is so interesting yeah so, oh yeah gosh, i always I recommend bet. i was like if you can like get it on video too no matter how gross because you'd be, su- be surprised by yeah. what you remember yep. and what actually happened yeah. outside of you yeah so yeah. that's crazy we actually did we videoed bella's birth which was so cool because mm-hmm. i looked back and i'm like oh my gosh i did that yeah <laughs> yeah it's okay so one fun fact was with avery's so yes this episode is a little bit explicit if you've made it this far her her umbilical cord yeah was over four feet long oh my and it was wrapped around her neck oh, so loosely scary. Be- oh loosely loosely because okay, it was good. so long yeah so oh they were like gosh. wow like who would have thought and she came out with it on her like it was a necklace like a loose dangly like, necklace hey. yeah and so it's so funny because we saw all of that and i'm like that is so funny and even my midwife well like, there's a picture of her measuring it yeah and she's just like this is as long as the mom <laughs> <laughs> i'm only 411 and so she was not wrong so oh. Oh I gosh. produced this organ and the How cord. does it even grow that long? Yeah, exactly. She must have been feeding her good. I know. <laughs> well, I was like, dang, my mother did a good job making that old organ and her. Oh and like, it was that long. And That's yeah, it's, it's really cool to see it measured out. I talked about this in my episode too, but I ate my placenta. Oh. Um, yeah, I got encapsulated. Okay. Yeah, and so it was really cool to see that. And I still have the cord. It's in her baby book that oh says gosh. love on it. And it, sh- it was so long that she was able to like wrap it twice. Oh and it's my gosh. really cool to see. And that's I don't so know if you're cool. like, oh, that's a no, lot. But no. I think in the miracle of birth, yeah. it's really cool that I can say that for her so that yeah. she can see it when she's old enough to acknowledge all of that in her own womanhood. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the funniest thing. So I I got to watch my niece and my nephew be born, which was so I saw that. Yeah, How lucky you. I know. It was awesome, like, seeing the different perspective. Like, I wasn't the one giving birth. Like, <laughs> watching <laughs> other people, like, it was crazy. But my sister, she had me take home a piece of the umbilical cord, I think it was. But I was, like, in the car looking at it like, oh, look at that little squishy thing. <laughs> But we kept forgetting it. It was in my freezer for like the oh longest my God. time. And then Luis would like open the freezer and he'd be like, oh yeah, I forgot that. <laughs> we, don't, we don't eat that kind of meat. Ugh. Yeah. No, I, I could totally see so that. funny. But yeah, so I had that in my freezer for the longest time. It just made me think of that. Oh yeah, that, that's hilarious. It's really funny you say that because when we were waiting for my placenta yeah. and all of the rest to get encapsulated, oh, yeah. it was... 
So after I had a baby, it was like a few hours later, mm-hmm. or actually it was the next morning later, the doula came to come grab it, the lady who was going to yep. bring it to go get it encapsulated. And so it was sitting in a cooler and it's a black bag with ice. Oh, yeah. And my mother-in-law was like, when we had transferred into your room, she brought everything. She was so proudly carrying it and she didn't know what it was. And so she's like, where would you guys like this? I didn't realize you guys brought some lunch. I'm like, that's not lunch. Well, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's just like, what? And I'm like, don't look at it. And she's like, what? And I'm like, don't look, look at it. it. And she's like, what? And I told her and she's the sweetest. She tried to be so sweet and like not having a reaction, but I can see on her face. She's she was like, like, oh, oh my God. She, this is so flamma, <laughs> so crunchy. Like, of course she did this kind of look without like trying so hard to like. But her face said yeah, it. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, I saw it. I can see your judgment, and I don't oh care because it's better so for me. Funny. Oh, funny. yeah. So that's what happened, yeah. and it just it sat there. I love when people came in and they asked about it. And I said that's my placenta, and they're like, "That's gross," and I'm like, "It doesn't matter." Like, right. And so the next morning, so when I tell that story back, people are like, "You really just had a piece of your organ that came out of your own body sitting there for like 24 hours." Sure did. I was like, "Yep," because it <laughs> came out of me, and I was the one eating it. So yep. I just, no issue with you or what you do yeah and uh yeah it was, it was really funny. cool because my midwife everybody was on the board yeah like i loved how seamless it was and i loved how she was just like yep here we go ziploc bag yeah. and ice bag and because there was a lot of regulations about it i don't know if you know but because i had a hospital birth they were like they couldn't put it in like they wouldn't store it for me oh, so that's why i had to bring my own stuff okay. but some hospitals let you store it in their medical like, oh got you know, it like the refrigerators and stuff okay yeah so wow i'm so glad this is why i'm like again i love my midwife and i will again drive the 20 minutes to go see her yeah because that birth center and everything that they do is so amazing where did and you they, give birth so i gave birth at united okay. but they have a hospital partnership with the minnesota birth center oh. and they're just literally up the hill from united okay like straight shot down there like you can see united from where they are yeah and they have one of the strongest partnerships in the twin cities with birth centers like freestanding oh, cool. birth centers and hospitals they're more regulated that way and everything but, okay oh, they just they make you feel amazing oh. and they make it like you were just so special and yeah they're in their clinic they're also attached to like actual bedrooms where oh they have gosh. the birth centers wow and it's oh, it's where i wanted to give birth yeah but again i'll tell you it another time and yes. i'll tell you guys another time <laughs> um, i feel like you guys are gonna be parts and parts yes um <laughs> the, like it not that it quickly turned from like oh no something happened at the birth center and therefore you had to go to the hospital yeah it wasn't ever anything like that would have never been the case at all okay there's lots of precautions before that even happens yeah it was just more so my midwife was already at the hospital and when I got there there's different regulations when the mm. overseeing OB okay. was there for like five minutes and saw my stress test and was like she's gonna definitely need a c-section oh god and so at that point if they say that they override the midwife and the midwife was like actually fine but <sighs> I can't say anything so oh that um, sucks and it sucked because the overseeing OB I saw him for like five minutes like yeah. I was already there for like 45 minutes and he right. came in like five minutes and he had seen a part of what was needed in order to make that prediction. Yeah. Like there's no reason for it like at all. It just, oh my, gosh. my midwife was already helping another lady that was in labor that oh. had to be at the hospital and we were just in the triage. Yeah. The plan was to go from triage to the birth center and they were waiting for another midwife to arrive at the center mm-hmm. so I can give birth. Yeah. But the OB chose my room to go into and was like not her chances of having a c-section is higher than 70 percent so she needs to be like here. at the hospital but they were like for what oh, <laughs> like, so, so yeah annoying. i'm oh these are great i'm not against them at all right. i think they're amazing if they're the route that you do that's great uh, cool good for you but my midwife knew what she was doing and everything was already pre-measured up until literally the moment that I oh, was going to give birth. So there was no worries at all about yeah. like my birth or how I was going to give birth. Right. But anyway, again, it's multifaceted. <laughs> There's lots of parts. Yes, there's lots of little parts. Okay, <laughs> we haven't even gotten into the whole we asked to stay at the hospital because Avery had, what did she have? jaundice jaundice okay yeah and my doctor was uninformed that that's more popular for asian babies anyway just because we don't process the same 
like chemical imbalance oh, or something. So it's actually really normal. And so you usually just send them home with a billy blanket yeah. for a couple of days and get them measured every couple of days. But mine didn't know that. So we had to stay. I Like I had to advocate more than I needed to because of the cultural lack of competence. Oh my gosh. And I had to really fight for breastfeeding when what? they kept pushing for formula. What? Yeah. Like I had to like, every hour. That. Yeah. Oh my and apparently gosh. it's really normal. Like wow. they were like, we don't usually get moms like you that are very pissed off about breastfeeding. And what? I'm like, well, you guys are not giving me the opportunity. Like I have the medical right to do. Yeah. So I wouldn't be this upset. Like, oh I'm not upset gosh. to want to be upset. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I remember I had to have that conversation with the head nurse. And she's like, no, that's completely fine. Just, you're just, it's my kitty. Oh, I'm like, what? the door's not rattling. I'm like, it's, oh, it's my, to go <laughs> <here>. <laughs> it's my cat. Um, I have French doors behind us. And my kitty is battling one of the doors. And the horrid face that. Oh, my God. That's so yeah. funny. So, it's my cat. <laughs> He's. It's a very it's a comical house. household. I will tell you, it's 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 a farm here. So. That is so funny. yeah. So again, that's just another little part. So we haven't even gotten there yet. It'd be another time. Oh, but uh, we're it. here for you. We're in okay. here for you, Jay. Stop making me talk, okay? You're the future I like to today. Listen. No, I need you to talk. Okay, so this part is called the Not My Secret. It's a good laugh story so you can admit anything you want here part in your admission is to make other mamas feel more comfortable in what happens in their day-to-day the stuff that they have to go through things that people don't tell you about it doesn't need to be your secret i mean this could be your coy way of being like it's my secret but i'm gonna say it's not my secret Mm -hmm. so or like if you know somebody else's secret that like is super juicy (laughs) or like family tea now will be the time for that (laughs) Okay, what do I want to talk about? Take your time. Let's Take see. your time. Should it be like mom related? If you want it to be. Okay, it's embarrassing. But it should be embarrassing. <laughs> That's what this is for. These are all confessions. Oh my god. Okay, so after I had Amari, I had to get stitches because I tore. So they were giving me stool softeners, you know, like every like four hours or something Mm -hmm. did you get Mm -hmm. is that normal because i don't remember having that with bella that was normal okay well i didn't want them with bella after my experience with them (laughs) so (laughs) so they kept giving me stool softeners and i was so scared to poop Mm -hmm. after giving birth like that was my one thing i'm like oh my god it hurts i know so that's why they give you stool softeners but they gave me a little too much (laughs) and Luis was in the bathroom showering and I had to poop so bad I couldn't even make it to the bathroom <gasps> and I pooped in the bed. Oh my god! And it was like it was like the bridesmaids movie when she oh just sits god. down in the street and she's like, This is happening. <laughs> how did you, I'm thinking like how did you get the courage to be like, so oh god, I have to get up. I have to get I, up. I know this. I tried so hard. Like I was trying to make it to the bathroom and then I'm like I'm I'm just gonna just sit down. Open. I just can't. I can't. I'm not gonna make it. Where was the baby? <laughs> he was in his little bathroom oh. thing. <laughs> and I was so embarrassed because you know, like I mean we had been together for a long time before having him, but it's like, oh my god, he hasn't seen me poop before and now like <laughs> I pooped so my funny. pants. <laughs> You pooped the bed. How embarrassing. I know. It was terrible. Oh, uh, okay. I have a poop story. Okay, let me that. hear it. Let okay, hear so it. one time I really had to go. <laughs> and in my lifetime, I've never, I'm, I'm the second to the baby. So, like, we weren't really taught things. We were just kind of, like, yelled to do things. Mm-hmm. And hopefully you did it right. I mean, that was just, you know, culturally, like, that was how you did it. And so this one time... I had to go and I, and I went and I flushed, but it wouldn't flush. It just kept rising. Oh, no. And I was like, why is it doing that? And so like, I immediately took off like the cap and I was like, is there not enough water? Like, what do I have to do? Put like more water. Like, how is this happening? And like, the more I flushed, the more it just kept rising. <laughs> and like, it got up to the brim and I was like, this is so gross. Yeah, like, oh no. And I was like, I see all the parts. <laughs> 
watching it and I, and I think I just went oh. into like survival mindset because it was like a fight or flight and I was like in fawn. Yeah. Like I just stood there and I was like, this is really gross. And You're then, like, I don't know what to do right I now. I didn't know what to do. And I was like, oh do I God. call my husband in? Because if I call him in, he's going to see my poop. <laughs> Okay, and I'm like, oh, no, it's not okay. I plunge this, like, because my thought was like, that's so gross if I have to plunge it because that means it's gonna spill and okay, it's gonna spill. I, I hate, have to clean it. I hate plunging the toilet. I always make Louis do it. Yeah, well, like this is like mine. So, like, I, know, I felt like I entitled. Like I You're had like, to uh, take care of it. Right. And so like, by the time I came in, it was like flooding, and he's like, why are you standing there? Get back over here. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. There's poop everywhere. And I was like, what are you doing? He's like, grab the plunger. And I'm like, I can't reach the plunger. <laughs> he has a, it's like, it's either a hop over there or like at oh this point, like it's gosh. seeping over the brim and it's oh, flooding the floor. And yeah. I'm like, this is gross. There is, there's poop everywhere. This is my poop. How <laughs> freaking gross. What do I do? And so he starts grabbing like toilet, uh, like uh, paper towels and he starts like just putting it on top. I'm like, ew, this is so <laughs> gross. This is disgusting. Disgusting, and he's like, "Wipe that face off. I need your help." And like, so calm. Oh and I'm like, my god! Why are you so calm? There's poop. There's poop. There's poop. There's poop. You're touching poop with your bare hands. Like, what is going on? He's like, "It's fine. It's just you know we can clean this up. It's mostly yeah. just water." I'm like, "It's feisty water." <laughs> and he's like, "Why are you freaking out now? It's been like ten minutes." And I'm like, "Why are you not?" freaking out. So did he like plunge it? So yeah, he got in there. He, he got it. in there. Yeah, he got in there and like tiptoed in and I'm like I watched it from like the stairs. I'm like this is so gross. Yeah. And he like plunged it and it took like two times and it just more water kept coming out and like he was just like grab the towel and I'm like no I don't want to grab a towel because I, I have to throw the towel. Yeah. And he's like no we can just wash it. I'm like I don't no. want to wash it. Like this is gross. That's a poop towel. Yeah. I was like those are poop towels. I'm almost going to see my poop towels. My poop towels. I don't want to put that on my face i don't want to put that somewhere else like i don't want to that's use not these gonna be clean and his answer was well that's gonna make the trash can really heavy are you gonna be able to bring it down and oh i'm like my that is your gosh. biggest worry dude like are you kidding me so that's uh that's my oh answer. my gosh. did yes and so i had to deep clean it and that was yeah that was disgusting because oh. i was like yakking the whole time yeah while i was cleaning it because he was just like we can just wipe it down and i'm like no no you have to like you clean did, that and disinfect, disinfect it <laughs> <laughs> everything like all the floors and it was a whole three-hour process oh my god he thought it was a little redundant but yeah. i'm like I, you don't understand that right. was disgusting yeah it was like two inches of like just water <laughs> that's disgusting so uh anyway, that's mine oh my god yes. that's great i will have to say after i saw my video of my birth yeah i was like Wow, my butthole was that open and that big, huh? Oh my god, so I didn't realize own. that until I just watched my sister give birth to my nephew, and I was like, oh, <laughs> wow. Because like with my other sister, I was like at her side the whole time, and she pushed out my niece pretty fast, so like I didn't, I wasn't like all down there, but yeah. my sister, she pushed for like two hours because her contractions were like four minutes apart, <gasps> so like we had to take Wait, a break yeah. in between each push, and so I was like down there looking, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, it just her, is naturally open. You yeah, know? her boyfriend was like, looks like a big old popcorn kernel. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what you want to hear while you're birthing. Exactly. She was like, what? <laughs> My butthole looks like, what? <laughs> it's true. You're like, I didn't know it was like that. I know. You know, I was you like, don't. Really? Yeah, you really don't. Yeah, it was. It's just so interesting. It was. And I was just like, oh, well now I get why people, why women just poop. Like, I mean, stop yeah. trying because it is, no wonder doctors don't see anything when women do ask if they're pooping or not. Because I know. it's like, you're you pushing everything You're pushing everything. Like, you can't yeah. not, not push. I know. Yeah. So I get it now. Yeah. I get it. It all makes it. sense. And it's like, that made me understand the the pressure <laughs> that yeah. hurt afterward on oh, all know. the parts, you know, know, after I saw that, I'm like, that's, That's why. why. That's why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So that's our girl talk for you guys today. I really hope that you enjoyed this girl talk. Jade and I can seriously talk like this all night long. And I hope that you truly enjoy this episode because we enjoyed giving it to you. Yeah, it was so uh, much fun. Yeah. <laughs> I really hope that was a necessary break that you needed. I know it was necessary for us too. So thank you and I can't wait to see you guys next week. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of The Necessary Break with your host, Philantha. We love that you enjoyed yourself with this episode. Send us a voice memo of your favorite moment. Write a five-star review and click subscribe to be the first to listen to the next episode. See you next week.